Exynos Octa-Core, Snapdragon 800, which no three variants better? I've been asked this question quite a lot in recent weeks. So in this video, let's go ahead, run a few tests, some benchmarks, and basically try to figure out everything and anything that's different between these two variants. So if this is your first time here, or if you've just plain old forgotten, my name is Ash and you're watching C4E Tech. Let's get started. Let's start with the boot time test. Both Galaxy Note 3s that you see have been factory reset. The one to the left is the Exynos Octa-Core variant. The one to the right is the Snapdragon 800 variant. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and reboot both. The iPhone 5C will act as the stopwatch. So just rebooting. All right. The Exynos kind of booted up a little faster. This is exactly what happened with the Galaxy S4s as well. I just quickly ran through setup, signed into my uh, Google account, and I'm currently downloading a bunch of benchmarking apps. In this time, I've gone ahead and set both devices to auto brightness, changed the timeout to 10 minutes, and uh, I've also enabled the battery percentage indicator on top. Keep in mind, both these devices were on 100% charge when we started. I literally just unplugged them from their respective wall chargers. So at the end of benchmarking, we'll have a rough idea of which chipset optimizes battery usage better. I'll be back with you guys once all the benchmarking apps have been downloaded. Alright guys, the benchmarking apps have been downloaded now. So let's quickly start with Antutu Benchmark. So guys, as you can see, the Exynos variant comes out a little ahead. So just going to device info. Okay, nothing there. So going into details. So these are the detailed scores. So guys, next up, let's run 3D Mark Ice Storm Extreme. As you can see, the Snapdragon seems to be maintaining better frame rates consistently. So guys, as you can see, this is one benchmark test where the Snapdragon totally outperformed uh, the Exynos variant. So let's quickly move on to another benchmark test that uses the uh, landscape orientation, Nanomark 2. Nanomark 2 results are again neck and neck, so nothing between them really. So let's quickly switch back to portrait mode. Okay, I'm going to keep it a little more zoomed in this time. Alright, and now I'll move on to CF Bench. Full benchmark. Here we go, these are the results. The Exynos does manage to do better this time around. So Linpack single thread, again very similar results. Again the Snapdragon variant pulls ahead when it comes to Linpack multi-thread. Now let's run an all-time favorite, Quadrant Standard. In Quadrant, the Snapdragon variant performs a little better. Let's run Velamo. Very similar results here for Velamo. So, going back, let's quickly run Geekbench 3. Run, run benchmarks. The Exynos variant manages to do a little better here. So, going back, Okay, now off to GFX Bench. Okay, first let's do DRX HD on screen. Start. Okay, 
the Snapdragon variant seems to do better here again. So let's now go back and run it off screen. Again, T-Rex off screen, the Snapdragon variant comes out ahead. So we are seeing a trend here. Anything that's CPU intensive, the Exynos seems to come out ahead. Anything that's GPU intensive, the Snapdragon seems to come out ahead. So we're done with the benchmarks here. The next thing, let's quickly go and do settings. Okay, both of these are 32 gig variants. So let me just see what is the storage available. So the Exynos variant needs 6 gigs uh, of free space to run the system 5.64 with the uh, with the Snapdragon variant. Uh, the available space here is 24.74 gigs and 25 on the Snapdragon variant. I guess the next difference is obvious. The uh, Snapdragon variant is the one that supports 4G LTE. The Exynos variant doesn't, at least not in most markets. So. Uh, the next one that we're going to see is 4K video recording. This is obvious uh, a lot of, I mean, this is one of the biggest differences between both. So uh, with the Galaxy Note 3, with the Exynos variant, going into settings, video, you do not have 4K. Whereas in the Snapdragon variant, you do. Well, this is not very important because a lot of us might not have displays capable of playing back 4K video. The minor advantage that you get is even when you record a video in 4K and scale it down to 1080p, when you zoom in, the digital zoom actually still gets you a better resolution than digital zoom on the Exynos variant which records directly at 1080p. So guys, at the end of this video, as you can see, both these devices when we started off were at 100% charge. And now after about an hour of intensive uh, benchmarking, both chipsets being stressed fully, we can see that the Exynos variant actually has 81% charge remaining, whereas the Snapdragon variant has a little over 79% charge remaining. So while this is not a big difference, but then again, if you're watching this video, it means you are nitpicking. So these are minor differences. I just thought I'd point this out to you. A common complaint from Exynos users is that the Exynos variant of the Galaxy Note 3 does utilize more RAM than the Snapdragon variant for system processes. That is untrue. As you can see over here, the Exynos variant does show as utilizing about 290 MB more RAM. But you can also see that it shows 2.66 gigs as the total usable RAM compared to the 2.38 gigs that the Snapdragon variant shows. So overall, with both variants, you end up with about 1.5 gigs free. So guys, apart from this, there are another two factors that we haven't talked about. One is the region lock. This seems to be almost exclusive to the Snapdragon variants, the ones that are being sold in the United States and Europe. Uh, so yes, well theoretically, yes, the region lock, region lock can be broken if you're rooted. Uh, it is not working 100% right now. It will be fixed in the future, but it is a pain nonetheless. And another thing is the Nox counter, because of which, again, as of today, there is no way if you've rooted your phone to unroot it and reclaim warranty. The other reason is firmware updates, both official and unofficial. We saw this with the Galaxy S4. The Galaxy S4, when it came out, had a few issues. Say, for example, the purple fringing issue. As in, when you go into the settings menu, you try scro scrolling a little fast, you see a bit of a purple color that shows up where the white lettering was. So this is more obvious at lower brightness levels. And this was kind of fixed by Samsung with an update uh, within a few weeks to a month for the Snapdragon variant. The same update to make its way over to the Exynos variant took a few months. This is because Samsung's primary markets, the, uh, the markets that Samsung's, Samsung tends to focus on, is Europe and the United States. And uh, since these two regions end up receiving the Snapdragon variants, Samsung kind of uh, prioritizes uh, updates to the Snapdragon variants. And again, uh, as far as development goes, the Snapdragon variants do get a lot more development. There is a lot more custom ROMs. Uh, routing tutorials come out a lot faster. So if you're into any of these, yes, the Snapdragon variant might be something that would be useful to you. But overall, uh, if you're in a region, what I'm trying to say is the Exynos isn't bad by any means. It is a great chipset. 
it has its own set of pros uh, and a few cons as well uh, if you are in a region where you can choose between both then yes going with a snapdragon 800 might make sense if the price difference isn't more than say 20 30 dollars uh, but i get a lot of questions especially from my indian brothers here uh, asking whether they should import the snapdragon variant well that is a huge pain first off you know the earlier reason that i talked about the uh, region lock importing it first means shipping charges customs duties uh, and then dealing with the region lock so anyway to get the region lock off you need to root it so if you're going to root it you lose your war warranty because as of now you cannot unroot it uh, and gain warranty back and again having to reship it in case of warranty issues is going to be a huge pain uh, the exynos is really not all that bad as you guys have seen with the benchmarks so uh, if you don't have the option of choosing the snapdragon going with the exynos you're not going to lose anything almost nothing uh, a little bit of uh, i mean the 4k video 4g and so on so it's not a big deal uh, overall the performance of both these phones and both these variants are definitely comparable and you're not gonna be missing out on a lot by choosing either one over the other so I guess that pretty much wraps up this comparison video guys hope you liked the video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and uh if you guys do have any video requests for me make sure you hit me up on facebook twitter google plus the direct links to all my social networks can be found right below the like button so given the choice what would you guys go with the exynos 5420 or the snapdragon 800 let me know your thoughts in the comments below so once again, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you guys soon in the next one. Till then, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.